Hey guys, welcome back to the Way UK podcast. My name is Jesse, and we're joined with Zenya. Zenya, and we're also joined by a very special guest today. You're kind. What's your name? Chris. Chris. Names? Yeah. Chris Russell. Just Chris got. Russell. Ooh, there you strong. Go. Chris, could you give us a little like introduction? Who are you? What are you up to with your life? Uh, yeah, thanks. Um, I am uh, a father. I've got nice. three daughters. Um, married to the brilliant Belinda, and I work at this point. I work for the Archbishop of Canterbury. Wow! Yeah, I know. I'm surprised. Big Wells. Um, uh, as yeah, big Wells. <laughs> Are you allowed to call him that? I don't actually <laughs> to his face. Um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, I work for him as his advisor on evangelism and witness. Wow! Mm. Evangelism and witness. That's incredible. No, we're we're really privileged to have Chris today, and like just tap into to the depth that you have with God. Um, even the stuff you, you're just even bringing as we were praying before like going into the podcast it's just like wow there's there's a depth here mm-hmm. um, and so we're hoping that me and Zen have the abilities to bring out the gold in you <laughs> which shouldn't be too hard because there's not too much many people would say it's a bit of a, bit of an impossible task there, <laughs> many people yeah gosh. all my family your whole family yeah. Belinda included <laughs> yeah oh gosh yeah. that's not good um <laughs> Well, guys, we're going to start by going to the streets and asking the the people some questions. So, let's go to the streets. Do you think God speaks to people? I feel like if I've heard the voice of God, I've more seen it as like my intuition more than like an external thing speaking to me. I also have like severe anxiety, so I'm really like clouded by that as well. So I think a lot of the time it's very hard to listen to that intuition uh, rather than trusting like something else that you may hear or, um, you know, a different path. I think God is the good voice in all of all of us. Uh, is the good voice inside of us, like they tell you like to choose this uh, or that. He speaks to me all the time, for me at least. It hasn't been in like the audible voice coming from like the sky with thunder, but um, he works through, well, he works, he interacts with us and talks to us through our interaction with other people, um, through us, like through the spirit. So, no, yeah, I've spoken to him all the time, like in different ways, it's like, I mean, I don't know his ways. You know, we can't know his ways because he's God, so. So, we've just come back from being on the streets. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't know what your thoughts are, Jesse, but I think, I thought it was really interesting how um, God's not limited by what you believe in. Like, God will speak regardless of if you believe he can or if he, you believe he can't. Mm. And actually, some of the people we spoke to that were like, oh, I'm not a Christian, they were like, oh, but I feel like I've had instances where I've heard God speak or yeah. I felt that, mm. you know, I felt that voice from God um, in whatever context. But yeah, I think it's interesting that God's not limited to our faith. Mm. Like he exceeds that. I don't know what you think about that. but Yeah, I think there was a recognition of this, that there's lots of coincidences and mm. stuff like that. They're like, oh, there was, lo- I was, I said my first ever prayer and then, suddenly this coincidence happened where my prayer got answered and you're like oh hang on there's two dots there like can you connect them a little bit you prayed and then it happened and you call it a coincidence Mm. so there's there's a clear recognition that i don't know there there can be like a supernatural intervention or like things can just happen or like people can suddenly get a sense of direction but also there, there was a lot of people that found that in other ways like there was a lady we talked to um who, who kind of was talking about her experience of drugs and how like through drugs found all this other direction on spirituality and stuff, which we wouldn't say is the right direction mm. or the right way to hear God at all. Um, but there's kind of, yeah, there's lots of different backgrounds, lots of different ways that people think they hear God, uh, which is why we brought Chris on, Come on. to give us some clarity, hey? Yeah, exactly. Very good. And um, I guess for, for us as Christians, we we describe that, the Holy Spirit, the th- like one of the members of the Trinity, is a key part in us hearing God, mm. and a yeah. key part in us um, understanding what God's God's saying and like God speaking. Uh, but there's this big question that like a lot of new Christians ask, and even me, who's been a Christian for quite a few years, like who actually is the Holy Spirit? Hang on, like I, I sometimes forget, I sometimes don't know. Um, I guess that's my first question, Chris. Mm. What would 
your description mm. or definition be? It's so hard, isn't it? Because we haven't got any categories. Mm. Like, you know, we like Jesus, we can picture someone with a face. Of course, we've all got our ideas, like subconsciously usually, or from the chosen or something, about what, <laughs> what Jesus actually looks <laughs> like. Literally, yeah. yeah. Um, uh, there was that, ch- a friend said that um, he turned up, Jonathan Romy t- like, yeah, turned yeah. up at their church and like the church was like, oh, G- Jesus is here. I'm like, no, every week. <laughs> Every yeah. week he's there, yeah, yeah. Like, yeah. not just the one. Not just up. Jonathan, but yeah. like the like the second person of the Trinity, Jesus. We we can kind of get some handles in on yeah. that, like because mm. physically we could have touched him. Whereas the spirit, how do we begin to mm. kind of comprehend yeah. who it is we're talking about when we're talking about God, mm. the Holy Spirit, um, and then you know the old language of Holy Ghost, which I'm kind of allergic to. Like that's like we don't want to use that language because that mm. just sounds a bit really weird and yeah. like spooky and that kind of stuff we don't want to do that so um yeah who are we talking about when we're talking about because we don't have the categories for it mm. but and that's why i think leaning into the stuff that scripture gives us to say oh, look here are some of the characteristics of the spirit and here's some mm. of the ways that the spirit works and this is the kind of thing that the mm. spirit does N- knowing that everything we say about the spirit is like we're just we're just like we're just in the shallow water Mm. We're just at the. We're just scratching the surface of it, mm. uh, necessarily because the spirit is like only here, in part. Like all the language in scripture is like this is a deposit of what's to come. This is the down payment. This is the first fruits of what will one day be in full. So, all of our language and understanding of the spirit is just like in these shallow waters of the yeah. Mm. Uh, no, like, totally. Yeah, no, uh, we've pretty... got things to say, but we can't say everything. Yeah, that's yeah. no, great, and I think. We'd love to to pick up on some of those characteristics. Um, for like this this episode, the the overarching theme is the God who empowers us, yeah. mm. like the God who enables us and yeah. equips us. Yeah. Um, and one of the first verses that has kind of come to mind within that is, and one of the first characteristics that like we like to touch on is in Romans eight, where it, uh, I can read it. It says, "How ironic is this? I've got my Bible on the table." And I'm reading the scripture off my phone. I can't believe it. <laughs> there it is. Gen Z. But, uh, but it, it describes him as a, as a helper who prays for us when we don't know how to. Yeah. And the scripture in Romans 8, 26 says, Likewise, the Spirit also helps in our weakness. For we do not know what we should pray for as we ought. But the Spirit himself makes intercession for us with mm. groanings which cannot be uttered. Um. I guess there's there's a few questions that come out of this groanings that, which can't be uttered is like is that tongues? Yeah, I think so. Yeah, I, I've, I, it's all all like, I think that's wordless. Yeah, that's from I've always taken. I love that passage in Romans eight. It's, it's like resonates at the like in like mm. you know when you sometimes you hear like cello music or like a big bass line or something mm. like that and it's like that and it feels like the whole of your person moves with the music mm. that's i think what sort of spirit is doing in in romans 8 is like yeah. this depth that from the depth of you mm. uh god is because uh, the spirit like god resonating in our the depth of our person yeah. mm. connect connecting us to to god because this yeah. is what the spirit does the spirit is is connecting us human beings to our maker to our creator to our redeemer mm. Uh, to the one who will completely fulfill us. And so the spirit comes to us, makes the distance up between us and God um, and, and, and draws and draws us, always drawing us in, always drawing us in. And in, in these verses, like draws us in by enabling us, to, by connecting us. I, like, yeah, I think the spirit's our connector mm. to, to Jesus, yeah. like, you know, in Ephesians, like to Jesus, binding us to Jesus. So we're never apart from Jesus, but like enabling us to know how mm. to, to, to pray. So mm. I've I, I've sensed the spirit doing that work of like that groaning. I've I've sensed it in a in different places. Sometimes in great joy, yeah. which is usually for me tongues. You know, that's mm. the language of my heart. It feels like mm. speaking in tongues, like the the overflow of like praise and love. Where I just don't know what else to say. I've just I just I mean it, it's usually because I I'm you know I haven't got the words because I'm not clever enough or not you know creative enough or imaginative yeah. enough. But, but you know, tongues for me is that overflow language of praise. But also there mm. is that kind of groaning of, I'm just in such such pain in this. I just don't know what else to, mm. don't know what else to say. And I think the spirit in that groans in us because I think in the context of Romans 8, the spirit is groaning in us because 
um, like we're in the f we're we're longing for our liberation as yeah. children of God. Yeah, isn't yeah. It? It's all in this kind of look. What the earth waits eagerly. Yeah, yeah. The, like, the spirit um, is creating in us hope and longing, and so in some ways, sometimes make, the spirit makes it harder for us because we're aware of the brokenness that we live in and what is promised. And the spirit, rather than just going, oh, I know, just like ease off. It doesn't matter. Don't enter into the pain of the world, or like mm. actually makes it makes it harder because like we're aware of this just fracture between how things are now and how God wants mm. it to be and what God will do. And so the spirit groans in us. So I, I've had that groaning in, you know, in, in intensive care units, praying with people where we didn't know what else to pray. Mm. We were facing the most tr desperate situation. And I felt the spirit just rising up at this like groan of like, things shouldn't be like this. Mm. Mm. We, we long for, for, for things to be different. And I think this is, that's the language, the Romans 8 language, which is yeah. this, like things aren't the way they should be. The spirit, God makes us long and hope and want things to be different and believe that things will be different. Mm. And, and so draws us into that. That's brilliant. Yeah, and I think it's interesting that you talk about prayer because I think for a lot of people, prayer can, like the concept of prayer is like, okay, talk to God, but how? Yeah. Like, what do I actually say? Yeah, yeah. And sometimes we can come before God and be like, God, I want to talk to you, but I just don't know what to say. Yeah. And so like what you were saying from the depths of you, like, oh, I love I love the Bible talks about as deep cries out to deep, yeah, right? Yeah. And like mm. the depths of us. Yeah, Psalm 42, it's beautiful. Cries out it? to yeah, the yeah. depths of God, right? And it's, and it's a it's a place of connection that your your flesh just, you can't do that by yourself. Like yeah. I know for myself, there are moments in prayer where like I, in my own strength, I'll try to like, position myself in front of God or draw draw deep to God, but our flesh is only so deep, but the spirit is way deeper. And then when you like lean into your spirit, man, like there's just something that unlocks within you and like the depth of your prayer is so much deeper. And even like being able to fix your eyes on God and like just be focused in prayer. For me, it's like once I, like once the Holy Spirit and it's just not no longer my flesh, but it is the spirit. I feel like my prayers become more focused and like, I can really draw into the presence of God. Mm. Whereas when I try to do it within my own strength, like it just, it just doesn't happen. But that's, but that's everything that God wants to do, isn't it? Because God so, so loves us. He never leaves us alone. Mm. So we're never thrown back on ourselves. So you never have to go, oh, and no, I need to pray or I need to do this. I need to act rightly in this, or I need to make this decision. And, and God never goes, mm. oh, okay, go and go and do that on your own. Mm. Like God, he even prays with us. Like he, he helps us to, he, he's the one, you know, in talking about listening to God or hearing God, it's like, it's only the spirit that helps us. Mm. It's only the spirit that uh, make, makes it possible for me to hear God, for me yeah. to receive God's love. So yeah. God does everything in us. So my question to myself is like, why do I spend so much time trying to do it on my own? Mm. Like, if God really is there for me yeah. all the time, like deep calling to, why do I spend so much time just thinking it's all up to me? Yeah, that's no, brilliant. I think the, the next thing I'd love to just kind of ask about is almost the, the fruits that we get from the Spirit. Yeah. Um, one of the verses that was highlighted to us is uh, how the, the Spirit of God can bring us hope and be filled with joy and with peace. Mm -hmm. Drawing off in Romans 15 where it's, it says the Spirit gives hope, the Spirit yeah. gives joy, gives peace. But that's not like once in the Bible that it says that. You look at Galatians 5, at the fruits of the Spirit, which... If you followed for the past couple of podcasts, I've <laughs> mentioned a few times because it's, it's just been on my heart recently. There's like a little bit of conviction to to look at what I'm producing yeah. and anything I do. Is it producing love, joy, peace, yeah. patience, kindness, yeah. all those? Um, and can I get picky? Can you get picky? Yeah. yeah. It's not a plural. It's not plural. Mm. It's not fruits. Is it not? No. Fruit. Yeah. Mm. Mm. So there's gifts and gifts are a plural because there's loads of them. Mm. And what the gifts you have, gifts you have, the gifts like m which are gifts, not medals, mm. given by God, given by the Spirit, and the Spirit enables us to do these things. We can talk about why the Spirit might give gifts, but the fruit, mm. the fruit is just it's it's a singular word. Interesting. So that yeah. means, and the thing, the reason I think we like the word fruits is it means that I don't, I just can just say I've not been given the fruit of patience. Mm. Mm. that's why I'm in because I'm not being that's 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 your fruit in you but yeah. I don't think the scripture doesn't give me that um wow. it doesn't let me off the hook yeah 
That's so the, wow. fru- the fruit of the spirit is all of this. Yeah. So I can't go, look, I've got six of them, but I wasn't given those other three. Yeah, it's great. I just have never been given patience. That's why I'm an impatient person. No, no, no. Because the fruit of the spirit is the, the life of Jesus in me. And, and there's no, so do you, do you know what I mean? So there's yeah, no, I can't so. say, oh no, that those ones, those fruits aren't for me. Yeah. No, it's all fruit. Interesting. Can you, this is a bit of a tangent, but can you. You took that well. Grow. Oh no, it's great. I love it. The fruit of the spirit is is nine kind of attributes. Yeah. Um, and I guess it in Romans fifteen, the scripture we were we were looking at, it's it says this. Now may the God of hope fill you with all joy and peace in believing that you may abound in hope by the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. Mm. So it's kind of it's suggesting that you get filled with the Holy Spirit and you you're then filled with like peace and joy, which is two of the attributes. Yeah. Um. And I know you said it's like fruit singular, yeah, like yeah. you get all of them. But I, I have met people who are less patient than of they course, are joyful. Of course, yeah, they're me. Sorry, you. <laughs> me, yeah. <laughs> You're less patient. Me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but how does that work then? I think, well, uh, uh, well this is my experience, yeah. right? I, I think that, so they're clearly God, God and us, we're in a dynamic. Mm. Mm-hmm. So God's, we know God in the particularities, in the like the specifics of our life. So the other month, I, my patience was really low and I was praying for patience. Mm. And then um, in that week, I had to, um, my daughter wanted me to take her uh, or drive the car in London and wait for her while she went to shop for, she was going to university. Right, so I, I parked the car. I said, how long are you going to be? It was like eight o'clock at night. She said, I'm going to be 20 minutes, Dad. Mm. So like I waited 20 minutes and then I was like waited 40 minutes and then I got to an hour and I'm like, does she have <laughs> no respect for her father? <laughs> I've been waiting now for an hour. Like, it, does my time not matter to her? Like, mm. what? Like, I cannot yeah. believe this. And mm. then I was like reflecting and th- maybe this was God's voice. And God went, look, you've been praying for patience. How do you think you're going to learn patience Mm. unless you're in a situation where you have to be patient? (laughs) And and so for me, this is how I never pray for patience. (laughs) This is how this for me is how it happened. So, of of course, there are all there's gifts in everything Mm. in every conversation, every encounter. Mm. The spirits at work to say to me, oh, you didn't you acted too defensively in that situation or why did you why did your ego appear like that or what yeah. about that or what about that it's all great. the time and if we would just like tune ourselves and be alert to what god is saying to us and what god's there always because he loves us always because he wants us to grow more into the likeness of christ mm. but like there's always things so a- absolutely god does specific things so everybody listening god will be doing sp- different things in each of us Mm. The, the our job my job isn't to to work out what god's doing in you and to want god to do that in me mm. Mm. my job is to seek the spirit and yeah. and say what what is it lord you're wanting to form in me now it's brilliant that's so it's good brilliant. and i love what you said earlier about living like jesus right and the whole point of the fruit of the spirit the whole point of having the holy spirit in us is so that we can be more like christ and so that we can be less of ourselves and more like the God that we profess and the God that we love. And another part of that is just him affirming us and telling us who we are, because we we have his spirit and we're also made in his image. Mm. So we are image bearers of God. And that's an identity that we carry. And the Holy Spirit helps us live in that identity. And there was a scripture in Romans, in Romans 8, and it talks about how those that are led by the spirit are children of God. Um, and it says that the spirit doesn't make us slaves, but it makes us free, um, that we don't have to live in fear and that um, we receive this like adoption to sonship and we become children of God. And I just wanted you to maybe like touch on that and like how maybe for you personally or just broad, how the Holy Spirit helps us to live in that identity. Yeah. It, you're, you're, it's great. Like the identity stuff is, I think, one of the biggest things for us in this generation, mm. like like us old people. Mm. Uh, and, and you young people, like it's it's for it's for all of us. You're not an old, per- you're not an old so person, much. Chris. Um, no so, like, because because our identity like is challenged all the time. Yeah. And let alone we live in this this culture and this generation that thinks that 
you can make you can be whoever you want to be mm. but no one's life can bear the weight of that responsibility yeah we see it like people's lives cannot bear the responsibility of making themselves up the whole time yep mm. but god says to us look you, you aren't you aren't just whoever you want to be you are who i say you are yes and you are who i've chosen you to be in christ mm. and so i think what the spirit does like my simplistic like take on it it's like the spirit's like velcro for me Mm. with the word of god so god speaks that word and the spirit cut you know velcro yeah like, and there's those fu- there's the soft bit isn't there and then there's the funny like bit with the teeth on it yep now when obviously on their own they don't then they no, nothing happens but when you put them together they stick and for me the spirit is like the velcro the spirit is like what helps god's word taking me mm. so i start I, I can believe that this is true i can act as if it's true i can have mm-hmm. and sometimes for us with identity it's not that we're like a hundred percent i've got no doubts about this i just believe it but the spirit enables me one to believe it enough that i will act as if it's true mm. yeah and 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 we That's know fair. with god the more we step on the things the more we believe the more we have faith that what God says is true rather than what is the other voices around us or what we see or what our phones or what any, anything else tells us. That, and the Spirit enables me, I think, to do that. So the Spirit stops what God's word coming and just kind of hitting Teflon yeah. and dropping. Or, you know, the love of God. Like, it, it, you know, that all the dynamic verses in Scripture, that God's poured his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is this Velcro that enables us to receive what God gives, his words, mm. his affirmation, his identity for us, his hope for us, his gifts for us, and and to, and to receive them with faith that this is the truest thing that there mm. can be. Yeah, and I think what's interesting about the passage that was chosen is something I found interesting. It's is, um, in the verse in Romans 8. I'll read it so I don't misquote it. For you did not receive the spirit of slavery to fall back into fear, but you have received the spirit of adoption as sons by whom we cry, Abba, Father. And I think what's crazy to me is, is that we've received the spirit of adoption, but we, we can actually fall back into fear. Mm. Like he's speaking into it because it can be a real reality. We can fall back and away from it. And I guess that's one of the ways that we need the Holy Spirit is to to make sure that when we're like beginning to almost fear or fall back into these ways, like, as you said, he's the Velcro. He's yeah. the only thing that can like bring us back. And like, when we, I'd say that when I'm in moments where I'm like, oh, flip, I know I'm a son, but like, I'm beginning to fall into striving or like beginning to fall into kind of these, these negative patterns of the world or whatever. And like, my response is to have inward groans. Yeah. And I think like, again, we can look back at that, like the spirit intercedes in our groanings. It's like yeah. when we're in this position where we're beginning to fall away, God, like the Spirit, intercedes for us, always, and always brings us back, and it's because so we, powerful. Because we need, we need the Spirit. Yeah, we need. We cannot live our lives with and and Jesus Himself. The only reason, like, how did Jesus live His life? He lived His life because He was empowered by the Spirit to yes. do it. And and if Jesus, the Son of God, needed the Holy Spirit to live His life towards God, I'm going to need that too. Yeah, <laughs> too and, right. and so. And this is why Jesus, the risen Jesus, like when he meets with his disciples, what does he do? He breathes on them and says, receive the Holy Spirit. So the Spirit is the the life of Jesus. Jesus comes to live his life in us mm. through the Spirit, mm. right? Which is astonishing. So Jesus comes to live his life in us by the Spirit. And of course that's contested. Mm. And of course that's not just, that doesn't just 100% take. Of, co- of course that doesn't do that. And that won't do in the Romans 8 language until I'm, my adoption as a full, full child of God in, in, mm. in the new heavens and the new earth. You know, then, then I'll know. Then the full deposit of the Spirit will be, be present with us because we'll be in God's presence forever. But we only know that partially now. So, of course, it's going to be hard. But what if every time that I slip or every time that I um, realize, oh, why am I trying to do this on my own? That what, that what the Spirit does in that, Rather than condemning us, the spirit like goes, well, come on then. Yeah. Come, 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 come back. Always, the spirit always makes a distance yeah. up between us and God. Like we're not put in the sin bin for 10 minutes or two hours or three years. Mm. Like always make the distance up. Come yeah. back in, come That's back great. in. 
And so actually our weakness, so in, um, you know, Corinthians 4 language, mm. you know, our, our, we're, we're, we're jars of clay. Mm. We're fallible, weak, like broken. But the spirit, this is exactly what the spirit works with. So mm. with us, with our lives, these very lives, the Spirit like uses these lives to show Jesus. No, that's brilliant. Oh gosh, I'm oh. I'm feeling really encouraged. Um, Chris, we really love having you on. All right. Um, there's one one more kind of thing we'd love to touch on before we we close. Yeah. Um, you know, we talked about how it is possible to fall into fear, um, just in the Christian walk and like fall away and like, but within that, there's a beauty because. The Holy Spirit always makes the distance back up. Yeah. Always draws you close. Mm. Um, like we can then boldly approach the throne, which is crazy that we're, we can do that. And it's only by the Spirit, um, the Spirit and the Son. And I guess the, the final question is in moments of fear, um, particularly around sharing our faith mm. um, and like being empowered by the Spirit to like proclaim this good news. You know, yeah. you hear the Great Commission, go out and make disciples of all nations. Yeah. Um, and the, the verse that was highlighted for this was in Acts 1 verse 8. And it says this, But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come on, upon you, and you shall be witnesses to me, to Jesus, in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria and to the end of the earth. And that was Jesus to his disciples before he ascended yep. to heaven. His and last words. His last words. And it's like the Spirit will fall upon you yep. and empower you to do this. Yeah, And I guess really practically how do we tap into that yeah that's a great question and i think it's one of the things that we struggle with the most because we think that what i've got to be if i'm going to be a if i'm going to be faithful to christ if i'm going to live the life jesus wants me to live and 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 be a witness for him i've somehow got to move every conversation into talking about Jesus. Mm. Now, I've done that before with friends or with people I didn't know, like once with the window cleaner. And it was like <laughs> he got whiplash because we were talking about the windows at one moment. And then I was like, oh, no, I want to just go bring Jesus in. And like the, the, guy, the guy was like, what? It, like I, he literally, it was like I crunched the gears from and taken it from fourth gear into reverse. <laughs> but this isn't what we're called to do. Yeah. Mm. So I would say, right, we're not all evangelists. Some of us are evangelists, have been given the charism, the gift by the Holy Spirit to speak about Jesus. We're not all evangelists, but we are all witnesses. Mm. So right, Acts 1.8, the word witness, he's not using a verb. He's not saying you will witness, he's, he's, he's using a noun. He's saying what you're going to be. So every follower of Jesus is a witness. Whether we like it or not, we are all witnesses. Now, a witness... A witness simply says what they know. A, simply, a witness simply says, this is what my experience is of this, mm. and I'm going to give testimony to it. Interesting. Now, I reckon that all of us are witnesses by, by the gift of the Spirit that's been given to us. Now, that means you're a witness, and you're a witness, but you're witnesses in a way that I'm not a witness. Mm. So to be a witness, I don't have to go on a course. I don't have to learn the answers to the deepest theological questions. I just need to be able to give testimony and to live a life that's congruent, that's in step with what I have experienced mm. of the love of Jesus Christ right. for me. I love that. So that means everyone can do it. Mm. Now, the last thing, right? My experience is that the one prayer that is always answered explicitly by God in my life is when I've asked for opportunities to witness. Mm. Like usually if I pray that beginning of the week, it comes up sometime in the week and it has flashing lights on it and like big sirens going, here it is, here it is, here it is, don't miss it. Because someone will suddenly say, so tell me what Jesus means to you. Wow. Now, so I think witness, so we're not on our own in this again. Mm -hmm. So God, God's doing things all around the world, right? Mm. All around our families, our friends to wake people up to him. Mm. Like we see this in culture that like God's got, like people are singing songs and and like wanting hope and dreaming dreams that I think God is stirring things up and what we as Christians need to do we need to be alert to what God's doing what is God doing and I think a witness so when someone then says so tell me what like how do you have hope or what does this mean to you and it comes 
we simply say what we know. We don't. Yeah. I don't try and answer it as if I was you or you. I answer it if it was me. Mm. And and that's what a witness does. And the set last 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 thing. No, no, it's great. <laughs> is, <Love> it. <laughs> is that in the Greek? This is the real shocker, right? In the Greek, the word witness is martyr. Mm. Right. So wow. every Christian is called a martyr. Now, the reason that we, in our heads, martyr is someone who loses their life for their faith is because that was the cost of being a witness in the first century. Mm. In the first church, if you were a witness, you had to be prepared to pay for it with your life. Wow. Now, when we're, that's probably not going to happen with us. There are places in the world where people, their witness causes them to have to be willing to give their life for what they what they mm. believe. Yeah. No, it's not true for us. But the spirit helps us to be witnesses, creates opportunities for it and all we need to do is then to step in mm. uh, and, and and live lives that mm. then are in line with the things that we're saying. Mm. Mm. I think that's super encouraging because even if you look at look in the Bible, you look at the disciples, right? Um, in the book of John, like when Jesus is in the upper room and he's talking about how he's going to go to the cross, but he's going to send the Holy Spirit. And he talks about like, don't be afraid. And like the spirit will be with you and like you'll face troubles, but take heart because I've overcome them. And it's really, really empowering. I love what you said about the witness because at that point, the disciples, like for example, Peter, he hadn't denied Jesus yet. And that was going to be the, the really seminal moment. He hadn't done that yet, but he had knowledge that, okay, cool. Like this is a very seminal thing but then he goes to deny Jesus. But then even after that, Jesus redeems him. Why? Because the Holy Spirit, because of because of God and because like we are not far gone. And like, there's nothing that we can do in our, in our lives that could eliminate God and the Holy Spirit from stepping in and renewing us and like giving us that new life and turning us into new creations. Kind of like what you were alluding to, but I think it's really encouraging for anyone listening or watching mm. that like, the Holy Spirit wants to meet with you. Like he wants to intercede for you. Like mm. he wants to, to guide you. And so that mm. you can be more like Christ and you can have the boldness to share your faith. And there's nothing you can do that can disqualify you from being able to meet with God and for God to, to step in and redeem you. Like he wants to, and he's done it in the Bible and yeah, he's, brilliant. and he's done it or for so Romans many people. Eight, <laughs> Come on, Romans 8. Like... But, but in that, right. So Peter is prepared to witness it and he doesn't have to be, He's not the champion. Mm. He doesn't come out of the stories. Peter don't, generally doesn't come out of the stories as the hero. Mm -hmm. So the witness isn't the kind of the big, look at me, this is what you should be. Yeah. He, someone who goes, look, I. this is how much God forgives you. This is the love of Jesus. Because even when I, on the night before he died, I said I'd never known him. Mm. Even then, he, he accepted me, he forgave me, and he again gave me a job to do because this is who God is. Mm. And, and so... Actually, as a witness, I don't have to be strong and I don't have to just say I get everything right the whole time or all my prayers are answered. So part of my experience is that some of the strongest and most profound witness to my non-Christian friends is when I say, when I admit my mistakes or when I say I don't understand why that prayer for that person I was praying for wasn't answered. Mm. But do you know what? I found God in the middle of the pain of it. I found God in the suffering of it. I've got hope despite the most terrible thing happening that actually Jesus was with me in a way that I've never, ever felt him closer than when it was really hard. Wow. And, and I think that means that everything, God uses all of our lives, all of our lives, not to the great triumphs or the, like when we just hit it out of the park, but God uses, if we'll let him, he uses all of our lives to, to bring glory to him. And I think that's the strength of this category of witness, which I think is all through the New Testament is like all of us, witnesses i just want to be a faithful witness mm. Mm. strong mm. that's good that was great <laughs> yeah no chris thank you so much for for coming on today and and sharing mm. and and you're you're a guy who lives this out which yeah. is why like we can we can hear you and it, it not be in vain well um, yeah i mean i think that but the thing is i i don't i don't always at all and so you know i remember when we worked well, i lived in reading and we had uh, a teenager uh, like this is when my kids were young and one of the girls at church had just been chucked out of her house and she came to live in our our wow. house because she was 16 um she came to live with us and she said oh the thing i'm really interested in, chris 
is if you're the same person at home that you are at church. Mm. Mm. And I was almost like, okay, Laura, you can leave now. (laughs) (laughs) Uh, Because that's a challenge for all of us. And that's where Mm. our witness is most, like our witness is going to be most powerful when we live we live the words yep. we say yeah, and we show, show the love mm. that we say we've received. But you're never on your own. This is the whole thing, the spirit, right? We're never on our own. Yeah. Never on our own. Like I so said, even when we're on our own, we feel isolated. We feel like we, we're, we're, where are our friends? Are, are like we've, we've let God down again or like we don't know where God is. Never on our own. The spirit yeah. comes to us. This is what a brilliant like idea about the spirit is, is a person, but it doesn't have a body. So of course, God God can always make the different distance yeah. up because he, it's not gonna it's not gonna take him ten ten minutes to to walk there because mm. the spirit's here with yeah. us all the time. Mm. No, gosh, it's like it's incredible. What's a world? And it and it's you know even within this we've only scratched the surface. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, there's so yeah. much more to go into. Um, but yeah, what a call and what like a what a great practical thing for all of us to just. Just spend more time getting to know this God because because we can. Yeah. Like we've got a spirit that, that attaches us. We can go good, deeper with God. We have the spirit that enables that. And so, yeah, guys, do that. Read the Bible more. Read Romans 8 over and over. Like read, read and learn and listen um, and have it shape your life because it, it can do good things. And guys, thank you for, for listening. Um, we really appreciate it. And we hope to see you next week. The way out.